یعنی میرے کن کن میں سنگیت موسیقی بسی ہوئی ہے میری زندگی سنگیت ہے میرا مذہب سنگیت ہے Welcome to the sixth episode of the Chicago Dialogues. This series, as you know, is produced by the University of Chicago Center in Delhi in collaboration with Prohor.in. I'm Deepesh Chakraborty, a professor of history and South Asian studies at the University of Chicago and currently the faculty director of the University Center in Delhi. We've been lucky to have the best-selling author, Mr. Abhik Chanda, as the anchor for this series. Today, it is our immense privilege and honor to present the great Sarodist Ustad Amjad Ali Khan in conversation with Professor Anna Schulz, my esteemed colleague in the music department, and Mr. Chanda. Mr. Chanda will do the formal introductions. Over to you, Abhik. Um, Dipishda, many thanks. And very warm welcome to our viewers all across the world. So while we're waiting, um, this is, of course, the, the episode that all of us, many thousands, tens of thousands of us across the world are waiting and have been waiting for a while. Um, so while we wait for Ustadji to come back on screen, let me introduce Anna Christine Schultz. Anna Christine Schultz is the Associate Professor of Hello. Music and the Humanities at the University of Chicago. Her research centers around Indian music's power to activate profound religious experiences that in turn shape other identities. Her monograph, Singing a Hindu Nation, charts the nationalist interventions of Western Indian devotional performers from the late 19th through to the early 21st centuries. Her second book, which is forthcoming from OUP and entitled Songs of Translation, Bene Israel Performance from India to Israel, explores the gender and cultural translation in the devotional songs of the Bene Israel, which is a Marathi-speaking Jewish people from Western India. Dr. Schulz is the co-recipient of the H. Collins Slim Award by the American Musicological Society, and her research has been supported by numerous fellowships, including the American Council of Learned Societies, the Hellman Foundation, Fulbright Hayes, the University of Illinois and Stanford University. Anna, a very warm welcome to the show. Um, why don't I invite you to, to do the honors? Yes, thank you so much, um, Mr. Chanda and Professor Chakrabarti um, for these lovely introductions. And thank you, Ustaji, for generously making the time to be with us today. Um, so I will begin by, by jumping right into the questions. I, um, Avik and I will take turns and, and I'll start. Um, I'd like to begin by asking you, Ustadji, about your experience during the pandemic. Um, I can only imagine how difficult the last year has been for you as an artist, since you're unable to share your music in front of live audiences. So how have you coped with that? And have there been any silver linings, any unexpected blessings during this past year for you? So I would like to say Namaskar first to all of you. And uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to share my thoughts and uh, our conversation. 
Yes, pandemic, you know, nobody ever thought that the human being will face this kind of... Uh... So it has, I mean, it has been a very, very, uh, very big tragedy for the creative people, for the especially artists, musicians. And I personally had many world concert tours with Sharon has been with many projects uh, and we were scheduled to perform in BBC proms, Albert Hall and Carnegie Hall. So, so many concerts uh, got cancelled and postponed. And uh, I mean, we were not prepared to face the situation because we live for music and we live on music. So, you know, a classical musician has to surrender yourself to God and the Guru. And the, according to our training, we are not supposed to ask the Guru what will happen tomorrow. Because this tomorrow has to be surrendered to at the feet of the Guru and God. So we never knew, we were not allowed to plan our tomorrow. You know, every wise man, they plan their life that after five years, they'll do this. After 10 years, they will do that. After 15 years. But classical, real musicians, the classical, committed, dedicated musicians, they practically surrender themselves. So, uh, I, I, I mean, our family suffered a lot. A lot of financial, uh, you know, uh, you know, we didn't know how to... Thanks to my wife, Subhulakshmi Ji. I, I don't know how she's managing. Uh, it's more than a year that we are sitting at home and we are doing some virtual concerts. You know, there are some corporate houses. They wanted us to record and perform virtually and they gave us our performance fee. At, this, at the same time, the positive side of pandemic has been that we are thinking we are i mean i could i could spend more time uh, you know i was remembering my guru i was remembering my father and all those ancient ragas he used to discuss so i discovered and i i i, I achieved something musically in this pandemic uh, i spent a lot of time with my family a lot of uh, teaching sessions with aman and ayan and my grandchildren so, uh, you know, every profession, every professionalist in every field, uh, there has been negative and positive side. Exactly. Um, Ustadji, I'll, I'll follow it up with a, with a question of my own. The earlier when we were talking on the 15th and we were talking about education and you were lamenting the fact that today when you're looking at the school education, the teacher will say, open your notebook. Turn yes. to so and so page and start, right? There is yes. not much thought given to the well being and very little thought given to exploring the creative potential of children, right? Yes. Yes. But I would, I would really want to know, and I'm sure so would the users, as a contrast to this, during your years of the you know, formative education and training, uh, what we call, you know, ibtadai talim in, in our language, how was it when you were growing up? What was your education like? If you can share some memories of that. You see, my father, uh, he belonged to a different era. You know, he was the hero of 30s and 40s. Uh, the young Ustad Hafiz Ali Khan, uh, young Hafiz Ali Khan's music, only Bismillah Khan could hear, or Vilayat Khan Saab, he heard. So Vilayat Khan Saab um, often mentioned or Pandit Ravi Shankar, how my father used to play as a young musician. Uh, Bismillah Khan Sahib, he used to tell me a lot of stories. Uh, because they all heard, uh, they used to call my father uncle. So my father okay. was uncle of Bismillah Khan and Vilayat Khan and Ravi Shankar Ji. So I could uh, hear my father in his only old age because I am the youngest child. And uh, for him, 
edu the meaning of education was music only because we we have to redefine the meaning of education because there are so many phd's and so many ba ma or master but they sometime but they are not very kind they are not very compassionate uh, they are not very helpful so with all due respect to education but somewhere education could not create compassion and kindness in a human being i remember my mathematics was very bad in my school days because my father didn't allow me to go to school because uh, till the time we came to delhi and then my uh, i started going to school for few years and my mathematics was very poor on the paper because there is mathematics and music also which i uh, i uh, very naturally understood but on the paper i was very very poor so my father one day took me to the principal mr m n kapoor the principal of modern school in delhi and my father said how to improve my mathematics so the principal told my father khan sahab amjad will never pass in mathematics and i will never fail him because he has come to play sarod in this world so can you imagine a principal talking this kind of language that he had feeling for my music he had feeling for my sarod and he could encourage creative children so the purpose is that in, uh, in creative children should be uh, encouraged and uh, every principal every teacher they should uh, spend time to find out because there is a creativity in every child but it is generally suppressed so much mathematics so much english so much this every subject so <clears throat> i i very uh, it's my humble thought that every school should create a period where children should not carry the books the teacher will only talk to them and share with them the meaning of love meaning of compassion meaning of surrenderness and the contribution of their parents in their life why the children are getting detached from their parents why it is very very sad that all over the world the old people are suffering the children are not taking care i mean forget about grandparents uh, i mean the children are you know when they achieve something they discard their parents so there is something wrong in our education system so i don't know how to improve and uh, and who to call educated person you have to re uh, invent re and redefine the meaning of education thank you for that i would like to switch the the topic a bit but i think it will probably bring you back to your family um one of the themes or the main theme of this um, event has been around musical cosmopolitanism. Um, so much has been said about the Ganga Jam Jamuni Tehzeeb in relation to Hindustani classical music. Um, and, and I'm wondering how you see the sarod as an instrument within that form of cosmopolitanism as being a sort of innovation that fuses the Afghan Rabab with Indian Dinkar traditions. So is it perhaps a, a prime example of that sort of cosmopolitanism? And, um, and also I'd be interested to hear you talk about your family's involvement in those innovations. You see, first of all, I don't approve calling it Hindustani music or Carnatic music. You see, India is the only country we have two traditions of North and South. But even South India is also Hindustan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why should it be called North Indian music only Hindustani? What is Karnatak? Karnatak is a state in our country. Right. And the literal meaning of Karu Nadu, a black mud, so it does not it does not 
uh, introduce the music by calling it Karnataka because it's a devotional music and music is music every music is based on 12 notes and so I, my humble suggestion is to call it Indian classical music of south and Indian classical music of north because uh, uh, the, I feel very uncomfortable to call Hindustani music uh, I always avoid uh, even using these words but it is uh, written in the books so everybody has to blindly follow the books because Karnatak is a state and all the South Indian Karnatak music is not only in uh, Kannar language it is the in a, you know the language spoken in Kerala or Tamil Nadu or Andhra so all the four or five states of uh, south they they sing uh, uh, music uh, uh, and most of their music is devotional music you sing in praise of lord rama lord krishna lord ganesha or goddesses so i have great regards for uh, you know, the music of south i have played many duets with great uh, musicians like emini shankar shastri ji Dure Swami Aingar Ji, Lal Gudi Jaraman Ji, M.S. Gopal Krishnan Ji, and Dr. Bala Murali Krishnan. So anyway, uh, I'll talk uh, because there's so much written on Sarod uh, in my website. So, But Sarod is a Persian word, which means music. So my forefathers uh, came from Afghanistan and settled down in central India, Madhya Pradesh. So they were in Riva. Even my great grandfather was in Lucknow also, in that court of Nawab Baji Dalisha. Uh, his name was my ancestor's ancestor was known as Ghulam Ali Khan. Then he came to Gwalior. So Maharaja Sindhya of Gwalior. So my forefathers, they were all court musicians there. So Sarod was modified uh, from Rabab to Sarod. And uh, my forefathers, it is our family pride it is the love of the family and uh, as a child i i you know in every year there were great sarod players in every era historically but as a child i was not very satisfied the way sarod was being played so i used to discuss with my father and sometimes he used to get very irritated with my questions he says are you a lawyer are you a vakil all the time you are questioning why Sarod can't produce this, why can't Sarod produce this. So because he used to say Sarod is a difficult instrument, it does not have frets like sitar has frets, guitar, mandolin, they all have frets. But you know the uh, main, <clears throat> the reason of my questioning was that I wanted to sing through my instrument. Da -re -na -na. So this kind of resonance and continuity I wanted to bring in my instrument. So by the grace of God, uh, with the blessings of my Guru, today I sing through my sarod. Thank you. That's, that is that's beautiful. Wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful, Ustaji. Um, you talked about, you know, the sarod being the love of the family and the instrument of choice through generations in your family. Yes. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, you also have a deep abiding love for percussion music. Yes. And yes. Uh, it is often, you know, I've, I've seen old clippings as well as uh, there was this documentary that was made by Gulzar Saab many yes. years ago. where you are you are teaching your sons but you are always accompanying on the tabla so while you were growing up was there any point where you thought maybe i can become a tabla player also no you see tabla <clears throat> is a very essential part of every human being the rhythm you know a child a boy especially boy uh, uh, most of the boys in school they are playing drums Yes. So they become drummer because the sound of the uh, drum is very fascinating. It, uh, it, it, it catches the attention. 
I mean, you must have seen in concert hall the moment tabla player play anything, it's a big applaud. Yes, yes. Because people th people feel that he's done a great job. So tabla is very impressive, very very. But I got interested playing tabla because there was a guru. My father uh, requested him to come to our place in Gwalior. So I got so involved with tabla. My father got very frightened and afraid. He thought I I might leave Saro and become tabla player. <laughs> so first, then the, he he hit the tabla for a few months, and uh, then I you know continue. But I have great passion, and I sometimes guide a lot of young tabla players how to what to do and how to accompany uh, the Sarod player. Because rhythm in our life is lay. Mm -hmm. You know, I always in my life began my concert on time. I never waited for the VIP to come and light the lamp. But poor organizers, uh, they, they have to wait. The VIP is coming in India. So many times concerts are delayed because VIP uh, maybe a minister or uh, anybody. So yeah. I personally uh, always began because I respect time. I respect rhythm. Rhythm is time. So, uh, and every human being is born with sound and rhythm. Some realize, some don't realize. This heartbeat is an indication of rhythm. And what we speak, talk, Conversation, recitation, chanting, it's all part of music. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I'm very happy like that. Sorry. I mean, I would like to say, say a few words about Anna, that working with her when I was in Stanford was a great pleasure and great uh, memory I have. And she's so committed and dedicated to music. And uh, I mean, during our conversation, I'll be very happy if she can sing something because she's learning Nati Sangeet and Maharashtrian <laughs> culture. Anything, whatever you feel comfortable, please sing something for me. Oh my gosh. Um, Ustadji, I, I, um, I hate to say no to you, but, but I think I'm not ready to that, to do that. I, I, I may, um, I may have a heart attack if I did that. No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 what, whatever the way, I mean, you feel comfortable, otherwise, sometime, uh, maybe some other time. Yes, we, oh. I would love to have a one on one and um, and share with you. Yes, God, um, we will, God willing, we will spend more time in Chicago one day. Yes, yes. I was also remembering um, our time together at Chicago, which was one of the great honors and privileges of my life. And it was um, Stanford. Just incredible. Uh, oh, I'm so, yes, at Stanford. Yes. Stanford. Oh, sorry, I said Chicago. <laughs> um, yes. it, it was really incredible. And it was um, such a blessing to watch you teach um, this group of students. Um, and as you were talking a, a moment ago about singing through the Sarod, I was brought back to that time at Stanford because you taught everything through your voice. Yes. You, and they, even and for all, instrumentalists. You see, they all sang because most of the Western is, uh, musicians, and they are very, very uh, you know, hesitant to open their mouth because they are busy reading, writing, which is a great art. I mean, I wish I could do that also. But uh, but everybody can sing. This is what I, I make my student realize that you can sing and you must sing. Because if you can express yourself, you'll be a better instrumentalist, whether violinist, whether celloist or uh, sarot player. Because my father was also a great singer. Uh, you must have heard that Pandit Bhimsan Joshi often mentioned that for two or three years, he was in Gwalior in Sarodghar and learning vocal music from my father. And especially Bhimsan Ji always mentioned that two rag like Puriya and Marwa, he said that only he understood by the training of Ustad Hafiz Ali Khan sahab. 
so gulzar sir made a documentary film on pandit bhimsen joshi also yes. and my first documentary was made by a canadian filmmaker mr james babridge when i was i think 20 or 21 years old that was in 1971 so now there are about 6 7 documentaries uh, film made uh, on me and our family so uh, uh, it's nice that things are i think in stanford also you were recording every session of uh, you know what whatever i was teaching isn't it yes yes we have those archived yes yes what an experience and i wonder do you feel as though the sarod itself um is especially well suited to sing because of its fretless construction that it it's it's a it's a sort of perfect instrument for um sort of replicating the voice encouraging the voice resonating no, with the voice you see uh, closest to the voice is sarangi sarangi or violin or maybe cello this bow instrument is much more closer to uh, uh the voice and uh, among the uh, so sarod is a because it's a pluck instrument so uh, it is difficult to have that kind of continuity that kind of slides and glides and the gamak and uh, you know all those things so you know and as i said in every era there were great sarod players and my at my father's generation and you will be surprised that sarod has become so popular today by the grace of god that there are about 500 sarod players all over the world so and even sitar players tabla players maybe thousands so uh, thanks to all this uh, gadgets and uh, dvds and uh, and cds and you know I, we never had tape recorder in our house so but now youngsters they practice on microphone at home so there's a lot of uh, you know this electrical gadgets they have done they have been so helpful for the younger generation younger musicians so uh, you know the legends the trend setters have nearly gone we have more copy masters which is also difficult it's not easy to copy uh, ustad vilayat khan or copy ustad uh, pandit ravi shankar so i mean uh, it's a quality to copy somebody because uh, every student they want to become like the guru but some students get special blessings and they create their own world they don't sound identical copy of the guru so that uh, that is amazing in our classical field that uh, sometime the son or the principal disciple uh, creates his own world like in my family i mean many times some people ask who who do you recommend more aman or ayan uh, who is better than uh, you know out of the two uh, this is a very unkind question because for for me as a father and guru because i feel people should understand the approach of aman is different approach of ayan is different so the, i mean thank god they don't uh, sound alike they are not they are not a copy of amjad ali khan i mean they they have their own world they have created their own world and uh, by by playing certain expressions of a man you can make out this is a man ayan's approach is different so that is very important uh, in some family if you hear five six musician is difficult to know who is playing they all sound alike it also mm-hmm. happens but there's nothing great about that one should have uh, something uh, your own identity i think that's that's important i look I mean, forward to hearing what your grandsons will sound like when they get older <laughs> they are they are very fortunate 
that uh, you know in this pandemic their father ayan uh, because they are twins twin boys and he, ayan has spent a lot of time with them and they are uh, connected with youtube they are connected with all the they are watching uh, super superman also all the series of superman <laughs> and uh, so they are you know balancing is very important to balance the tradition and uh, convention tradition and uh, you know modernization or elect electrical world so one has to balance you often indians we talk of tradition but they are referring to convention because convention is a very unhealthy word i don't respect convention that my father had a mustache so i should also have his mustache you know in our country uh, especially if you in the field of uh, classical music or in a, even religion so people blindly follow convention there was a uh, discussion and uh, conference once when we were visiting america wesleyan university so there was a question which about 20 people talked on that subject that what is the reason of world violence so everybody gave their opinion and uh, but i thought the main reason of violence is religion because we dis we disrespect all other religion so in my family we respect all the religion and we feel connected with every soul of the world and i personally want to say that i belong to every religion of the world i belong to every religion of india and that is what i've learned through music because my audience belong to every religion of the world indeed um, so staji what would i think you're saying right if i understand you correctly is that unfortunately today we are living at a time i mean be that the us or be that in india more and more we are seeing people identifying you use the word identity you know cultural communal ethnic identity seem to be defining us and seem to be segregating us and in that kind of familiar i think it is music and the power and love of music which can play a unifying role music has connected the world you know there are only 12 musical notes and in our country our folk music is also very rich a line of melody can introduce that this is rajasthani music da 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 re da 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 a da 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 re da ra da 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 he ni maro da ra da so the line of melody can introduce the region that this is rajasthani music this is gujarati music this is punjabi music so god has blessed god has blessed us with beautiful music beautiful flowers india is like a bouquet of flowers actually with full of different colors and different fragrance and uh, uh, we only as uh, anna very beautifully she uh mentioned the word ganga jamni ganga jamni tehzeeb you know that people there are people of all kind of uh, culture religion and uh, so, so much diversity and uh, and that is our history that people know amjad ali khan play sarod who make my sarod mr himendr chandr sen so all of us depend on each other in india if hemendra chandra sen if he doesn't make a good sarod for me i cannot play the sarod so you know banaras who make the sari banarsi sari and who 
finally where those sarees so this is a uh, amazing country is it, it is it is difficult to uh, my you know the neighboring countries of india cannot understand the bond and the love i mean uh, in this country india made bismillah khan india made vilayat khan india made amjad ali khan so this is india people might talk so many things but uh, mishap and uh, accident mishap happens everywhere in the world i feel sorry when i when i think about 9/11 i feel very sorry but i am very happy that you have a amazing president mr joe biden and uh, kamala harris we have great uh, expectations from them and i hope they have a uh, feeling for our country for our uh, you know contribution of india in the history so i hope uh, one day i hope i'll have the honor of meeting them in india or in america amen to that inshallah um hearing ustad ji um, yes. anna would you say that this resonates with much of your own research you know when you're talking about indian musical traditions that clearly transcend boundaries you know boundaries of community boundaries of religion even it'd be great to hear your insights on that yes thank you um so my current book project is on adaptation and translation in in the songs of the bene israel a, a jewish community from maharashtra um and there are extraordinary examples of bene israel people adapting the tunes and musical practices of other jewish communities from around the world and from in india and also from other indian religious communities so for example in 1880 a um small group of of bene israel men um heard a hindu kirtan a marathi kirtan that they really loved and were moved by and they thought this will work really well also um within a jewish context so they um uh, created a new form of kirtan jewish kirtan to um teach jewish ideas and to um to communicate bible stories um to jewish listeners um and that form that those experiments that that those um uh scholars and artists did in the 1880s were hugely successful and it became one of the most beloved forms of bene israel music for the next 40 50 years um and recently i'm happy to say it's being revived again um by bene israel women in mumbai it's a beautiful country you know just few years back aman ayan all three of us we were invited to perform in lute festival in uh, jerusalem and uh, we had the honor of visiting all the you know uh, holy places where you know about the the history of jesus christ and the prophet and i mean amazing country and we really uh, enjoyed being there but you see anna any music of any country in any religion i mean imagine appealing azan what you hear from the mosque sometime uh, our indian uh, uh, priest or mohizzin the people who are doing azan they are not so well trained but if we hear the azan in cairo or in uh, arab world they are highly trained it the way they do azan is so beautiful so appealing and in every religious building whether it is church or synagogue or or gurdwara so everybody is connected to their god through music only there is a beautiful sound and the group singing 
we in india we have kavali you know group singing uh, when we are doing bhajan kirtan you know ragupati raghav raja ram or vaishnav janato so group singing is very appealing so <clears throat> and i had the honor of performing in so many church so many synagogues and and gurudwaras also because uh, sound has connected the world with all due respect to language but language creates barriers there's no doubt about it music connects i mean i'm collaborating with so many european musicians so many symphony orchestras and uh, it's because of sound and uh, once they write the once they write the music score it belongs to them and they play so beautifully as if it belongs to their forefathers so it's amazing such a amazing uh, style of uh, preserving uh, their notation and everything so i think world should understand that that uh, we have to respect all the religion of the world because everybody they have their own faith they have own trust so i mean we must uh, concentrate on our future we must concentrate on, on on the future of our children the younger generation because religion is just a way of life one has to be kind compassionate helpful supportive and thanks to all the uh, doctors and front line workers of this pandemic they have done a great service to human uh, human race and thanks to our prime minister mr narendra modi that this lockdown was so essential that he immediately did for all the people in india that really helped because lockdown at the right time the india could do so thanks to our prime minister thank you your your words are such an inspiration about music's power to um unite um and and i wanted to pick up on uh you you mentioned vaishnava janato um and and to my knowledge i believe you're the first um sarod maestro to perform popular tunes like this and yes, yes. um and you've also brought about many other changes such as um introducing tarana and other vocal styles of playing um so i i wondered if you could speak a bit to that um you know this was quite a departure from tradition so um you know how did you get the idea to do this how was it received and and how do you think it has shaped the way audiences perceive the sarod uh as i said sarod has become very popular and there are so many young talented uh among the generation of amane and so uh, sarod has uh, is doing very well uh vaishnav janato and ram dhun it came because i have great regards for mahatma gandhi the father of nation uh, mohandas karamchand gandhi uh, who you know that freedom fighters they played a very important role for our country for our future they gave their lives so on several occasions uh, i was invited to perform uh, on the you know 2nd october the birth of mahatma gandhi or 30th january the day he you know he was assassinated he was killed so i have performed at sabarmati ashram also uh, in gujarat and uh, and once uh, i was uh, invited in unite uh, unesco in paris Uh, they they were honoring me and uh, dr bala murli krishna uh, with the gandhi medal the director general of unesco and uh, our prime minister was mr uh, narsimha rao at that time so it was a delegation we all went with mr narsimha rao 
and we received Gandhi medal and uh, we performed. And I created a new raga uh, as a tribute to Mahatma Gandhi. It's called Bapu Kos. Da 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 you know, it was challenging uh, to play any any song. Uh, you know, Akila Chalo Re, you must have heard I play on the solo. Tagore song. Yes. I, made a, uh, I made a CD as a tribute to Rabindranath Tagore and the legendary Suchitra Mitra, the great Rabindra Sangeet singer. She and me, we played, she sang, I played about nine, ten songs. So, it was a challenge to play any song which a street boy is singing. I would like to play that on my saru. So it was a challenge. And that is why, you know, I feel comfortable. And Tarana, what you said, the great contribution of Hazrat Amir Khusro, you know, who created sitar also. And many instruments, many rag. If you hear, if you read his history, Hazrat Amir Khusro, uh, his shrine is in Delhi, and to 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 make his guru happy, Hazrat Nizamuddin Aliya. So he used to compose uh, songs and in Avadi Bhasha, and Tarana he created. Tarana does not deal with language, so he created a language of syllables. Tana tom tadare dani dirdirdani. So I have made many taranas, but this particular composition is in Rag Bahar, which I have performed all over the world. So this is uh, you know, syllables of tabla, pakhavas, mirdangam. So it is amazing, you know, because uh, Tarana, uh, very few singers in our countries, they sing Tarana. Otherwise, uh, everybody is busy singing Drupad, Khayal, Tumri, Dadra. So Tarana is also singing. So he created this style of singing, Hazar Damir Khusro. So, how much time is left now? <laughs> uh, we are getting a bit low on time. I think we have just two more questions. Yes, um, please. And please go I, on. I, okay. So, um, you know, speaking of these sorts of innovations you've made, Ustadji, I was again um, recalled back to your time at Stanford and your yes. performance of the Sarod Concerto um, Samagam with Samagam. the Stanford Philharmonium. Yes. yes. And um, I wondered and the if you could say... And uh, the conductor was... Uh, Jin Dong Tsai. Ding Dong. N no, Jin Dong Tsai. Yes, yes, yes. Tsai. Yes. He, was, yes. he was working there. Professor Tsai. Tsai. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. correct. Yes, you. Sorry to um, interrupt. Oh, no problem. Um, yes. So I'm just curious to know um, what you find most exciting, interesting, or challenging about um, working with a Western orchestra, because it's so different from other contexts in which you um, perform. You see, fortunately, uh, I had very good conductors uh, who were you know, great help for me. 
uh, right from the Scottish Chamber Orchestra. They invited me to create this orchestra, Samagam. And then New Jersey Symphony Orchestra, also I collaborated with Ron Jang. Then Chicago Philharmonic Orchestra with Lydia Lank uh, Lankisvikaya. So Russian lady, Lydia, she was conducting uh, Samagam when we performed for United Nations uh, to give tribute to Mahatma Gandhi. So <clears throat> you see, they have, they have been many of our Indian musicians who created, uh, they were, they created symphony orchestras. But, uh, you know, generally uh, in our previous uh, symphony orchestras, there was a lot of percussion involved, if you remember. So I, because I have, from my childhood, I used to listen to Bach and Beethoven and Mozart and, and I used to enjoy this harmonization, counterpoints, but we could not do in our, our kind of music. So this harmony and, uh, um, you know, listening to those great, uh, then I realized that in the symphony orchestra, there's hardly any role of drum. You know, it is purely melodic. So I created Samagam. It's a very, very special only melody. Melody of so many ragas. And uh, there is only one point where, it, where tabla player is playing a very small short piece there. Because I, I, I belong to sound actually. I live in the world of sound and melody is my life. So, and I don't want to destroy the character of ancient symphony orchestra of the Western world. So Thank I, you. I uh, love that statement. This is, this is my musical flirtation. <laughs> <laughs> I love what you said. I live in the world of sound. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Uh, no, Vicky, yes. Ustadzi, uh, thank you so much for, for your insights. We are coming towards the end of our program. But yes. I want to take you back to something that we began with. We began with Talim, we began with education, we began with you know, training at, at the feet of the Guru. Now, in our current times, you know, two decades into the 21st century, how do you view the Guru Shishya Parampara? How do you view something like Gharana? And how can that be sustained? You see, these, all these words sounds historical now. Guru Shesh Parampara and Gharana and, uh, you know, because uh, the commitment which earlier generation had for the Guru is absolutely is dying out because uh, everybody, what I see since uh, last uh, uh, 25 years that everybody is in a rush to perform. Everybody, I mean, you might have met so many people, they will only ask you to give them chance to perform. Very few people are interested to learn and complete their education of music. Everybody wants to perform. And earlier days, there were very few people in our country. They were called Ustad or Khan Sahab or Pandit. But today, if you see uh, the website or YouTube, everybody is Pandit, everybody is Ustad. Everybody is Khan Sahab. So because as a young person, my first award of my life was given by a music institution of Allahabad, <clears throat> Prayag Sangeet Samiti. 
I must have been 15 or 16 years old. They called me Sarod Samrat. Sarod Samrat, it's such a big honor by a music institution. It's a big responsibility. It was a blessing of all those you know, musicians working in that university. They decided to encourage me and uh, make me realize uh, my responsibilities of my life. This Padma Award, I honor every award. I mean, Padma Bhushan, Padma Shri, all these Padmas are very, very uh, great awards given by the government. But to receive an award from a music institution, that was, uh, I can never forget that. Because in our country, now musicians who are 40 plus, they also deserve an award now. Because in our country, you must have seen when a musician becomes 70, 80, 90, then they are considered for uh, some time. Musicians go away from the world without the award also. So at the right age, if a musician is encouraged, a young musician is very, very important. And my father <clears throat> was, uh, you must have heard that great story about my father, about Raag Darbari. My he's, father he's received the, uh, my father received Padma Bhushan in 1960, and at that time we were we were living in a rented house. We did not have car also, but my father took me along uh, to Rashtrapati Bhavan, the president house, because he was receiving the great honor Padma Bhushan, and that was the time I first time uh, you know closely met. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Dr. Rajinda Prashad, Dr. Radha Krishnan, Dr. Krishna Manan. So after the investiture ceremony, there is a ritual. It's a convention to have a tea party in Mughal Garden. And the Nehru, Mr. Nehru came and my father introduced me. So there is a photograph. I'm shaking hand with Mr. Nehru in 1960. And then the president comes to comes up to my father, Khan Saab. I hope you are comfortable. You know, at this stage, generally a musician who is living in a rented house, he asks for a government accommodation. Yeah, please give me a house or give me a car or something. But my father was a fakir, you know, very saintly person, absolutely committed, dedicated to the purity of rag, purity of music. And my father began telling the president that you are the president of India, it is your duty to preserve the purity of Raag Darbari. I was feeling embarrassed as a young boy that my father is saying all these things that to the person they don't, I don't think he knew what Darbari is. Then the president asked my father, Khan Sahib Mein Samjha I didn't understand what you said. Again, my father said, that now Raag Darbari is, uh, you know, being handled very badly and it will it will lose its purity. Uh, you are the president, you are a president. And because he was hoping as if next day he'll pass a resolution in the parliament that everybody should sing Darbari like this. He was so innocent. And uh, so the president immediately said, yes, yes, Khan Saab, I will do everything what you want. Please tell me what can I do for you. Then my father said, it's time for my prayer. Meri namaz ka vakht ho gaya hai, ghar jana chata hu. It's time for my prayer. Uh, I, I must, he, he was not aware about the protocol that you can't leave before the president. But he left and I was behind him and no security officer stopped him also. So he came home and told my mother, like a child, not about Padma Award or Padam Bhushan. He said the president has promised that he will take care of Raag Darbari. So that was Ustad Hafiz Ali Khan Sahab. Ustad Ji, uh, we've gone beyond the hour, but it's been such an enchanted time. Uh, ki time ka, you know, work ka to milai nahi. Now, a Thank lot you. of the viewers are asking me, ki abhi, you know, Rukhsat ka wakt hai. So, and you mentioned Darbari. So if you want to 
maybe sing a few notes I'll play on the sarod someday uh, because uh, I have... My, I have never practiced vocal music, but uh, I, as I said, I sing through my instrument. Sadi, that was so, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. I really, uh, and uh, please forgive me if I have hurt anybody <laughs> through my words, uh, because uh, I, 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 I speak out, I share everything, whatever comes to my mind. And I've written a few books also, on, and I'm uh, now I'm, writing a autobiography also and uh, so i'm very happy and honored to uh, to share my thoughts with all of you thank you so much and looking Stadji, forward the, to the privilege is entirely ours the honor is entirely ours on behalf of the university of chicago on behalf of prohor on behalf of all the, the viewers across the world thank you so much Namaste. thank you thank Adab. you Anna. thank you Adab. thank you so thank much you.